we're going to do a new segment in the podcast. Uh, we're doing polls on Angry Snowboarder VIP where we ask three questions and whichever one gets picked will answer. So mm -hmm. in third place, the A Basin Heelside Slasher. I really disappointed this one didn't make it to the top because I would love to talk about him. Yeah. Second place with 19%. What one discontinued board from the history of snowboarding would you like to see make a comeback? I already know which one I want. And in first place with 74%. If you were forced to only ride one company's products for the rest of your life, who would you choose? Who would it be, Kevin? I've thought about this a lot. And... I get. I mean, so part of that ha maybe has to come down to who makes board boot binding. Almost maybe, but you could also just do whatever mega conglomerate owns multiple brands. That's also true. I mean, if we're gonna go mega conglomerate easily, that's Nidex. That's pretty simple for me. Well, then you got but. Yes Jones, <laughs> Flow, Rome, Battalion, Lobster, Switchback. Now, yep. I've only got two boot brands, but. Now that I only ride soft boots and like soft soft boots, I don't really care too much because I can get soft boots from anybody. So, yeah, I mean, well, you know, I, I was looking at this question, and I think everyone expects me to say K two because mm -hmm. I've ridden K two for so long, but I'm really pissed off with them putting three degree canting in their binding, so K two <laughs> can fuck off right now. <laughs> uh, I, I put a lot of thought to this nitro. Okay, and here's why. Because not only do you get nitro snowboards, nitro bindings, nitro boots, mm -hmm. you get nitro outerwear, right. nitro bags, you also get L1 outerwear, which is my favorite outerwear company, and I've been riding that almost exclusively for 12 years now. Yeah. Uh, so I would have that. Plus, I know that I can make their boots work for me. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a matter of, like, if. It's just I would have to – or that they can't. It's a matter of if, and it would just be a bunch of time spent – uh, doing a lot of boot fitting to get them to where I need them to be, but the bindings, they don't have canting, or if they do, it's like 1 to 1.5 degrees. They also have the largest board line in the world. It's bigger it's than Burton. Pretty freaking huge. Um, and a lot of boards. So many boards, but so that was the thing. Is like I thought about it, and they have almost every single camera profile. They've done every single mm -hmm. camera profile except mm -hmm. for straight reverse. That's the only thing they don't do. They do a flat, they do a flat to rocker. They do a hybrid. Mm -hmm. They do camber 2.0, traditional camber, cam rocker. They do low camber. Low camber. Yeah, they, they pretty much they do, do everything yeah. like that. The side cuts are dialed. Um, and you think about it. You've got everything from crazy stiff high-end free ride boards, split boards, powder boards, powder quiver boards, twin boards, all mountain boards, beginner boards. You've got everything. Same thing with bindings boots and outerwear you, you're pretty much covered across it plus every now and then if you actually look at the nitro outerwear they pop out gloves too mm -hmm. so like you, you're pretty much covered head to toe except for goggles yeah at that point yeah so i was thinking that's the it. only hard thing for me is because my my gut reaction to it the first brand that i went to when i saw that question was rome and that's i mean that's what i've been writing most recently and their bindings have always been phenomenal. Uh, you used to ride them back in the day. I did. I've been super happy with them the last few years. I think their bindings are absolutely dialed. Uh, I've been super happy with their boards. I think they make some of the most underrated side cuts in the industry right now. Uh, partly just because they're more known as your Dirtbag Park brand. And those dudes don't care that much about turning. At least they didn't used to. So they just don't, I don't know, they don't have the marketing behind their side cuts. But I think their side cuts are great. So I can get my turning style out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, they've got all the types of boards that I really like. They've got the feel that I like. I love their bindings. I know their boots are solid. Um, they have a wider profile, though, inside. Like, they fit a little wider. Yeah, which is good for me. That fits me. So, okay. Um, Outerwear is really the only hard part because they don't do pants because they at least do like a 5k like coach's jacket. Yeah, but you got to remember in the past they have done a they full have done outerwear, outerwear past, line, so yeah. they could theoretically bring, could bring that, that back. back. Yeah, so if the I could other, pick the, like a the other thing more specific is, brand, it would probably be 
I mean, yeah, it's pretty hard for me but not to But the other thing wrong. you got to take into consideration is that for 2021, all production will be at SWS. Mm -hmm. So it will be a consistent production line. So it won't be stuff made in Canada, right. Europe, China. It's going to be made yeah. one spot. And SWS is solid. I, I, you know, no, they're, they're, they're solid factors. So yeah. It's going to be good stuff, yeah. And, yeah, in Rome, with the uh, with the Nightacker backing and that kind of the, the leverage for – Raw materials, basically, like Rome stuff, is just going to get better and cheaper. True. I mean... Well, more than likely, I can't speak for their business plans, but the stuff's certainly going to get better because they're going to be able to leverage higher-end materials for at least the same cost, if not cheaper. Cheaper because they're leveraging it across <clears throat> so many different brands. So right. There's that. Um, yeah, see, like with Nitro, you've got a made it Playmaker, but they've got a specific partnership with Playmaker, so they're mm -hmm. basically Playmaker's factory brand. So you get all the new technology that's coming out of there. So you got like that um, Corite Core, all that other premium materials right. in there. Plus, you know, the thing that I like, like they, they have a lot of tech that they don't hype as much as they should or they don't really push it like the power pods most people don't actually know what that is but it's actually a bump right under foot on certain boards so you get that added contact point so it's the same thing as like an arbor grip tag uh the marhar attack arc um it's Realm calls it quick rip quick rip similar, yeah, similar. Yeah. it theirs is less defined <clears throat> yeah but but it's got that you mm -hmm. know you got that rail killer edge and that cleave edge in there yeah. so it's yeah, a yeah. thicker um it's got the thicker metal edge in there and stuff, and plus their boots. You, you you've got three lacing options with their boots. So you got quick lace, you've got regular lace, and I'm pretty sure there is a bow on there. And it, whether or not they, I think they do a bow. I'm pretty I, sure they I do. I want to say, it, but it's only like on a low end. Boot. It might be, though. but yeah, um, it doesn't matter if they have it. They could always put it on more. Yeah, so that can it's, it's, So mm -hmm. there's that. So you got your options with that, and you got your binding options. The fact that they do split boards. You know, it, it's a huge. They have one of the biggest catalogs in the whole entire snowboard industry. So. They really do for one solid brand. Yeah, yeah, they really do. It's pretty massive. Yeah, I have to go just because we're going to keep talking about this. Second pick would probably be Ride for me. That makes sense. Yeah, they've got like I mean, I rode fuses for two years, one set of boots for two years, which is ludicrous because I've never been able to do that. Um, well, now I can because now that I ride dumb soft boots, soft boots don't break down because they're already broken down. So, so you say. Top tip, at least for me, at least you know I've got because I rode my DC links a lot this year too, and I'd already put 80 days on those, and I put probably another 20 on them, and it doesn't change. Right. Like once they're all broken down and dead, until you snap a spine or something like on on a soft boot, then you're pretty much good as long as nothing's falling apart. But yeah, so ride. You got a ton of days out of the fees, so I can ride their boots. Their boots are solid. I like their bindings. Uh, the Hefe ended up being one of my go-to bindings for this year until reviews started coming around, and I had to start writing a bunch of other stuff. But, um, and then could I argue that I could throw K2 into it? Because yeah, remember, well, it's the same company. Theoretically, I could throw K2 into there as well, um, which gets me lean ATs, and that's another one of my go-to bindings and some of their shapes. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's some stuff in the ride catalog that. I could, ride, I could ride every day. Well, see, be pretty happy with and and they do outerwear. And that's they do true. Decent outerwear. Like I've got some stuff from them that I've been super happy with. So well, I mean, this year normally, you know me, I don't. I'm not usually a super fan of ride sports, but they've mm -hmm. got like two or three in their line for next year. Like I reviewed that, I was like, oh fuck, I kind of want to buy one of these. Yeah, and the, you know, ride ride side. I think my number two choice would probably be Endeavor. Okay. Uh, just because, like, literally, I think there's been, like, one board of theirs that I wrote that I was just like, meh, whatever, but they're just the concept of how they do everything, mm -hmm. like, you got your powder line, you know, and, and just across the board, when you drop down in tiers, everything shares the same material, so it shares the same price point, so you got your twin, your directional twin, and then, like, your free ride one. You know, you've got that choice, but I, I really haven't had a bad time on anything, and I do own that archetype, and yep. I, I still think that, you know, every time I go out and I'll, like, review a whole bunch of different powder boards, and then I have to go get back on my own, like, I was like, I got on it and was like, 
within one lap, I was like, oh, God, I forgot how much I love this fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just so good. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And, like, the new clout shape for Rusty's Pro model is solid. Plus, they're doing that carving board, the Alpha. I did not get a chance to get on that. But, you know, you'd have that carving board. You've got your twin park boards. You've got your all-mountain boards. You, they got multiple camber profiles. Plus, if you dig back far enough, they have done some reverse. They have done other things. So there, there's potential for that. The factory they're coming out of, um, as long as the cassettes are clean, they usually the boards turn out good. But like my my archetype has probably four or five dimples on it. I know it's a sample. It's a second. It's fine. Like they gave it to me after the first year archetype review because I caused them to sell out the first year. Yep. And the second year. Mm -hmm. So uh. Word to the wise, if you do want uh, an archetype, I think you can pre-order them right now off their website. It's probably if, worth it. Uh, it's going to sell out again. There's yeah. not a doubt in my mind. So uh, make sure that you get one mm -hmm. because that, that is a sought-after board. But, yeah, I, I think Endeavor would probably be, actually be my number two. What do you have for number three? So this this one's hard because... The history is not quite as much there, but right now, uh, Mervin. Oh, yeah, like the current line right now. Yeah, so that's that, and that's kind of why I say because you know, ten years ago we wouldn't have touched Mervin. They were all dead planks, pretty much for the most part. And there was a couple. Escape and ass. TRS was all right um, back then, but yeah, now as long as you think stay consistent, like for the last. Three years? Probably about three, four. Yeah, yeah three, four well, years. Two, three, maybe. Yeah. There's been something in their line that I was like, all right, I could ride that every day. And I love that metal. I like their bindings a lot. Dude, those bindings are so much better now. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't even consider the... I don't, I don't even think it's the same brand, honestly. Like, I wouldn't even... Obviously, it's the same brand, but not really. Like, no. They're so drastically different that yeah. I, I wouldn't even call it the same brand. Um, yeah, like their bindings I really like, and there's always a couple boards in their line I really like, and I like the fact that Mervin in general does a ton of weird shapes, I like to play around with that stuff, because I, I like that, so that their would probably be is really third, huge. tentatively, because it scares me with their history, I don't want them to fall back into making boards like that, but I think that was just a nature of well, old like style manufacturing, and once they started using basalt, they started using more... More better, more better cores. More better? Yeah. Um, Does she just mean better? <laughs> no, <laughs> more better. More better. Uh, yeah, more better cores. Started paying a little more attention to the side cut, the way that Mag works on the side cut. They introduced. Mellow well, they mellowed out. Yeah, they mellowed It's gotten, out. like, even regular Mag has gotten mellower over the years. It, it, it's um, that. It doesn't have that, like, super crazy serration yeah. and point to it anymore. So. That gets up there too, um, partly because of the bindings. That's what really pushes it up into third spot. The honorable mention, and the only reason it gets knocked down is because they don't have an attachment to bindings. Would be niche. I've yet to write a niche. I didn't have a good time on. It's ever since they left Elon. Uh, or yeah, GST. GST. Ever since they left GST. Ever since it went out of GST, I've yet to have a bad time on a niche. That makes sense. And, you know, I'm an eco nerd, so there's that too. I'm going to I'm gonna throw everyone through the loop. For Ooh, three. Here we go. Burton. Yeah, I almost went there. I Here's really the thing. did. Here's, I just here, have here. such a hard fucking time with their boots. That's where I would struggle the hardest is yep. their boots because I don't have a foot that would fit them. Mm -hmm. What I what I would need is it would – I need something that's like an imprint four liner. Mm-hmm but with a narrower fit. It's got to be narrower in the heel and only slightly wider. And so what I would end up doing, I know what I would end up doing. I would take the liner. I'd have to cut X's at the joint, right at my big toe joint right there, at the ball of the foot. I'd have to cut X's on the outside and the inside to push my foot out where I need to while putting foam right behind it through the instep. Mm -hmm. Rip their footbeds out because they're garbage. All remind in there, and then I'd have to do a tongue shim in there to make it fit the way I want. The other thing is, even even their stiffest boot isn't stiff enough where I need it to be stiff. It's it's a stiff boot. Don't get me wrong, 
but it would not be stiff where I need it to be stiff. So that, but I know I can, I know I can ride cartels. I know I can ride Malavitas. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, worst comes to worst, I would just go grab a mission binding, rip the straps from the cartel off and actually put it on there or the, I think they're the same straps now. Are they now? They might be. Well, uh, whatever it would be, would do that. And then, um, I would probably like, there's a couple boards that stick out to me as being my type of thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, they've got the history and stuff and worst comes to worst. Like if I was forced to, I'd assume I'm in that situation where I could call JG up at Craig's facility and be like, I want this board. Right. Cause I'd just be like branch manager now. Yeah. No, nah, give me four of them. Yeah. One in every size. And that would be what I would do. And I, I think that would throw people because like, some people think I'm a super Burton hater. I'm, I'm not. It's huh. just there's been years where they have just – they go – when they do new tech, they go a little too overboard with it, and they take it to an extreme that they shouldn't. Like mm -hmm. when you think about um, center scoop and tip scoop. <laughs> yeah. That the, when they, they, the when whammy they bar. skip their scoop phase, it was yeah. just way too much. Whammy bar. Um, yeah. That – Whammy bar is fucking horrible. Even the Holy Moly, because that's when Burton was making all the forum, forum stuff. stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, the Holy Moly too is yeah. still one of the worst boards. Yeah. And then I think for runner up, I'd probably end up going back to Rome. Like I've owned Rome boards through the years. I've had great times on. There's a lot of stuff in there that I like. Right now, the best binding that I honestly rode for 2020 was the black label, which is absolutely fucking hilarious because <laughs> I'm coming off the second lowest end binding from K2. To a fucking showpiece binding that's five hundred and eighty dollars. It's over five. It's over five hundred bucks. Yeah, and it's it's a fucking showpiece binding, and it's literally the best binding that I tested. And it was like, it's for the, dentists. No, it's for oral surgeons. Well, it's the next. It's the next evolution. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> that thing is, and it. It was a little heavier. Like, I could tell with that two-piece construction, it was a little bit heavier than what I was used to. But the power transmission and the drive and the way the straps fit and everything. Like, in all honesty, I probably could get away with a Katana and be totally fine. Yeah. But just that binding, it just felt so good on my feet. And it's so funny because when I had to give them back this week to the Rome rep, and I was just like... How do I get three pairs of these? I need to replace some bindings. And these things were fucking money. <laughs> I was like, there's $1,500 plus yeah. dollars in binding. Just crazy. Just so fucking absurd. Yeah, I mean, it was, out of all like the ultra pricey bindings I've written, it was probably the best. Still not like a regular binding. Like the O-Drive from uh, now was definitely like, if you're looking for hyper performance, was better but as far as just a regular snowboard binding the black yeah well snowboard. the funny thing is it's they secure. openly admit that it's just a talking point yeah it, it, it's to say that we can it's not to push it's not to move units no I, I bet you there's less than 500 produced for it but yeah but yeah i i could ride that i'm i've had their boots in the past they're too wide but i i think they've changed their mold since then and i'm pretty sure even their stiff boot but the problem is that they don't really make a super stiff, stiff boot. The guy, I've, I've, I've flexed into the guide, and it's maybe Mesa's. Which it's is okay, because that's... I would but, just probably go through three pairs a season. Yeah. I'd be like, 50 days, done. <laughs> Send them to Shred Foundation. Be like, here, give these to some kid. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping the liners. <laughs> Pull the liners up, put them in the next shell, and go from there. I but, like all the D3O tech they use, too. Yeah, it's a cool material. No, that it that works. was cool. I like the fact that you've got your option with the bindings from regular size disc to mini disc. Because I'm not typically, I'm not a fan of mini disc. I like that bigger dead spot because I'm so used to it. Right. But going to that mini disc, and the funny thing was, it was mini disc on an ICS board when I wrote it. So like, I mean, that dead uh, spot yeah. is tiny. Yeah, real small. But that binding felt so good on my archetype, and I was just like, ah, oh, this binding. So it just didn't feel like anything. A, and that's that's a dentist set setup. Oh, totally. That way I was... <laughs> well, I did pull up in a Volvo. That too. Our You're design. just crushing the dentist scene at, at that moment. I'm starting to wonder if that's why I can pass cops at 70 miles an hour in that car in, in a 30 and not get a ticket. Yeah. Just wave. Just be like, hi! 
Plus my car's red. <laughs> you can't really just blend into a crowd with a car that's passion red. Right. I love that it's called passion red. It's not fire engine red. It's passion red. And it's an R design. And it's one of a hundred. <laughs> I'm fucking so dentisting out these days. Crashing. Crashing it. Whatever. I saved so much money on that. But <laughs> recap. Me. It goes. Rome. Ride. Mervin. Honorable mention niche. And for you. Nitro. I'm brain farting. <laughs> <laughs> but was Endeavor number two more? Yeah, it's 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 Nitro Endeavor, then it would be Deep. um Burton? Burton and then, and then Rome. Honorable mention Rome. Yeah. yeah. But I mean honestly, like I'd be content with yes. Yes has a lot of great stuff. Like yeah. there's so many. There's brands. a lot of brands. Yeah, I mean to pick to pick the number ones out of there. That's I don't know. Half half of it is maybe just mood or just like you were saying with Nitro. It's just because their line is that massive. So there's a ton of brands out there. Like I'd be happy with Arbor too. Like their vines are solid. I've never had a bad time on an Arbor board. Like that would be. You you tell me. Oh, you can only write Arbor for the rest of your life. It'd be like. I've owned like right. twelve arbors. And yeah, I, I mean, it really wouldn't phase me. Yeah, I need I've to try their bindings. Like, yeah, it, I, and the the good thing is of like where we're at right now. Yeah, it's pretty hard to find point, shit. It's not good. Yeah, we've hit a point where we're you have to really be a shit brand to make a shit product. Yeah, like everybody like, still makes something that's just not unless great, you're Gildson. But even still, like there's plenty of brands out there that like the worst board that they make is still something I could ride every day. Right. I mean, yeah. we, we, in the 10 years I've done angry, we every year progressively gotten better and better and better and better Yeah. at the quality control and stuff. And I think the internet actually holds companies a little more accountable, which does go back to like the mm -hmm. intro where that dude was flipping his shit, but yeah. he, he was a bitch. Yeah. Well, when you but got still, a legitimate concern, it's, yeah. you can't, like the company can't just sweep it under now no. with the power of social media. If you've got a legitimate problem where a company's legitimately fucking you over, you can let everybody know immediately. You can let thousands and thousands of people know and the company can't do anything about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that there's a lot of power behind that. Um, yeah. Just recognize when it's your fucking fault. All right. I'll do a top five with Randy, the warranty guy. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's kind of, I think that's that, the answer to that one. That was lengthy. I'm pretty sure that's going to throw some people through a loop. Thank you, probably will. So yeah. we'll see some comments yeah. uh, in various sections, maybe on the website, maybe on the podcast. Definitely on YouTube because everyone loves to comment on YouTube. Yes, they do. 